We are at a crucial moment in our nation's history with 153 days to the next presidential and parliamentary elections. Two years ago in 2022, right here in this same auditorium, in my prophetic address to the nation, I submitted to the government and to all Ghanaians that Ghana was at a crossroads. That speech has been called a crossroads uh, speech. Unfortunately, the government refused to listen to that altruistic conversation and the raft of viable and innovative policy proposals that I offered to them that evening. Two years on, our country is in the worst state. In between the period, I have been having a series of innovative conversations with you, conversations that do not talk down or talk at Ghanaians, truthful and honest, continuous conversation that admit that our nation is in peril because Ghanaians have victory in our DNA. I know that despite these perils, we can overcome our difficulties. Let me thank you for your presence this evening for my first major media encounter ahead of the December 2024 elections. In addition to my digital conversations, I intend to have a number of such media engagements, not only in Accra, but in other parts of the country. As I have done when I was president, I passionately believe in transparency and accountability and engagements with the fourth estate of the rim. These have always been an effective way to reach our citizenry. And this is why I'm happy today to be with you again to sustain the conversations about our dear nation, Ghana. And do not worry, the media encounters and my virtual engagements will not deny you the opportunity to catch me for one-on-one -on -one interviews either in your studios or whenever we meet at events. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the time for change. The time for change has come. And it is not just a slogan, but a clarion call to the heart and soul of our nation. This is a time for change because of the urgent need for a transformative shift in the way we govern, the way we create jobs, the way we live, the way we provide social services, including health and education, and the way we envision the future of our dear country, Ghana. After almost eight years under the deplorable leadership of the Akufuado and Baumea administration, we have seen our country sink into a serious economic abyss. The current economic mess sums up the verdict on this MPP administration. The harsh reality is that for most citizens, the piteous journey over the period has been a very bitter experience of economic and social deprivation. The unprecedented levels of poverty, unemployment, deterioration in our people's livelihoods, and social inequity have exposed the dubious strategy of hiding incompetence under sloganeering. It confirms without hesitation that the disruptive and hasty experimentation with the lives of the Ghanaian people was underpinned by a naive exuberance, arrogance, and indeed selfishness. And I'm referring to the economic challenges that have shattered the dreams of our youth and the aspirations of the vulnerable in our society. No one has been spared, not children, not adults, including the middle class and the elderly have all been hit very hard. And I dare say, even you, the media, have not been spared. Fellow Ghanaians, and that's a very famous refrain, fellow Ghanaians, notwithstanding these challenges, I am imbued with the optimism and a steadfast belief in my God Almighty and the amazing creativity of the Ghanaian people to assure you tonight that together we shall turn around this tide. We shall turn this government's destructive tide into positive and progressive waves, waves that will reverberate in every home and corner of our country and across the globe, demonstrating that Ghana has once again gotten back on track. Let me give you five good and solid reasons why we shall reset Ghana and turn the tide. One is experience. Unlike any other candidate, I have navigated, Ghana's, I've navigated Ghana through tough economic waters before. My presidency was marked by significant infrastructure development, building economic buffers for inclusive growth while ensuring macroeconomic stability. 
I understand the intricacies of national crisis management and possess the proven experience to reset Ghana from the economic challenges that we face today. The second point is visionary leadership for economic revival. My vision for Ghana is rooted in sustainable development. I'll focus on revitalizing our economy for job creation through industrialization, enhancing agriculture, and ensuring the efficient use of our natural resources. My administration will introduce cross-cutting innovative policies that are inclusive, growth-oriented, and capable of restoring hope back to our youth. And the third point is commitment to job creation. Recognizing that our youth are the backbone of this nation, my government will prioritize and create decent, well-paying and sustainable jobs by fostering a conducive environment for entrepreneurship and innovation. The government and the private sector will not only tackle unemployment, but also inspire a generation of change makers and problem solvers. And the fourth point is championing social justice and equality. I wholeheartedly believe in a Ghana where every citizen, regardless of their background or gender, has equal opportunities to thrive. Under my leadership, social interventions and educational reforms will be strengthened. The vulnerable in our society will be protected and given the opportunity to change their circumstances. And let me add that gender equality will be a cardinal feature of the Mahama Jinnano Pokwajima and Flagstaff House. We we'll lead an administration that promotes gender inclusivity in every government policy. And that is why we propose to establish a National Women's Bank to empower women to close the gender gap financially. One million women will benefit from the Women's Bank to finance their small and medium scale businesses. And the fifth point is a call to national unity. Ghana's strength lies in its diversity. The polarization and partisan politics that have characterized the current administration's tenure should have no place in Ghana. As President, I will foster a spirit of national cohesion, encouraging all Ghanaians to contribute towards nation building regardless of their political, religious or ethnic affiliation. To the youth of Ghana, I say, I understand your frustration and your disillusionment. Many of you are feeling very frustrated. I can relate to the recent cynicism and massive mistrust you have in our body politics because the current government has been undeserving of your trust. The challenges of today might seem insurmountable, but I urge you to look beyond the present and dream with me of a reset Ghana. The Ghana we all want, where your talents and hard work will determine your success. I promise a Ghana where you are not sidelined, but at the forefront of change, where you can live happy lives and still achieve your optimum potential. This is not just a promise, it's a commitment. I will reset the economy and Ghana will be open for business for 24 hours a day. <laughs> Leadership is about vision. And the 24-hour economy is the vision to create decent and well-paying jobs. When I talk about the 24-hour economy, we need to understand the underlying vision behind that policy. The 24-hour economy is the means to an end, and the end is putting Ghana on a solid foundation for accelerated growth and development. We need to attain the growth rhythm that will turn our country into a developed economy and eliminate the abject levels of poverty we are witnessing today. An economy that will manufacture many of its needs, including food and beverages, drugs, clothing, and more, such that we can address the exchange rate volatilities due to needless imports. The world is moving very fast. We need to keep up with this new rhythm. So first think of the 24-hour economy as an accelerator the best accelerator or catalyst we could possibly have. A 24-hour economy will increase the production and distribution of goods and services and accelerate the economic exchanges between people and companies. And with that, we will start growing at an unprecedented pace while providing decent jobs for our young people. 
As I've said, leadership is about vis vision, and I stand by it. But leadership is also about caring. It's about giving people genuine, solid hope. And this is what the 24-hour economy is really about. And let me explain further. The 24-hour economy is a solid way to replace imports with homegrown production of goods, and thus creates a solid base for a vibrant Ghanaian industry. In many instances, we don't import goods because they are better than what we produce. We import them because nobody produces them here in Ghana in the first place, or because our local production is insufficient. Therefore, the stimulus packages for companies wanting to participate in the 24-hour economy will convince businesses, and I'm sure of it, to start producing import substitutes. And do you know why? Because the market for such products already exists. If the market did not exist, we will not be importing to satisfy demand. And so through the 24-hour economy, businesses will be incentivized to start produ producing for this market. It is the simplest way to start growing sustainably. And when this begins to happen, imagine the number of new jobs that will be created. And here is another thing about the 24-hour economy. It will boost exports. Many Ghanaian companies still will start looking for foreign partners to develop their businesses to take advantage of the new opportunities available to them via this policy. Indeed, thanks to the African Continental Free Trade Area, these partnerships will open new foreign markets to Ghanaian companies. And goods produced in Ghana will then be exported to other parts of our continent, to Asia, to Europe, or North America, using the connections of these foreign partners that we have had. And as I've said before, I will personally chair an accelerated exports development program that will, de that will identify and promote exports in the manufacturing, agricultural products, textiles, food and beverages, pharmaceuticals, and the extractive sectors. It is important to understand that the 24-hour economy will generate a network of foreign markets for Ghanaian entrepreneurs and will transform Ghana into an export-led economy. So I say that the 24-hour economy is also about national pride. It is about creating jobs through enhanced productivity, connecting Ghana with the wider world, and making companies proud of what they can accomplish here. Once the policy is set in motion, the rhythm of growth will start to accelerate exponentially, and Ghana will be open for business again. This initiative will anchor my determination to change the structure of the Ghanaian economy through the active support of private sector-led growth. And so be assured that the 24-hour economic policy initiative is a well thought through, data-driven, evidence-based and comprehensive policy to expand critical and strategic segments of our economy sustainably and it will liberate Ghana from the shackles of unemployment and economic dependence. And so, governance and fighting corruption for development. I am committed to drastically reducing the size of government, and rightly so. This government has sufficiently proven to Ghanaians that with over 120 ministers and deputy ministers, all they could offer was to run our economy aground. I will run a lean, highly effective and efficient government of no more than 60 ministers and deputy ministers. And this is solid proof of my genuine commitment to curbing government expenditure. This leaner government will be the cleanest government Ghana has ever experienced. It will serve Ghanaians far better and set higher standards for future governments. What we have now can obviously never and should never be a yardstick for governance. My goal is to launch a renewed fight against corruption. I'll keep my appointees in check, and Ghanaians can be assured that drastic steps will be taken to punish the corrupt officials and their accomplices in this present administration. No actor in this NPP corruption enterprise will be spared. We'll also take action to repossess what has been unlawfully stolen from the Ghanaian people. 
As we all know, government procurement As we all know, government procurement is a significant source of corruption, and no economy can sustain inclusive and equitable social and economic well-being with the penchant for public service holders to be self-serving and corrupt, as is currently the case. The use of public finances will always be compliant with our national laws, transparent, justified by contemporary value for money test, and solely in the interest of the broader citizens. If we want to eliminate corruption, we must increase accountability in government procurement processes. And accountability gives power back to the people. God willing, as the incoming president and leader, I assure the people of Ghana that the NDC is fully committed to accountability. And this is why one of our key policies will be to set up an independent value for money office to scrutinize all government procurements above $5 million threshold, or as shall be recommended by Parliament. Transparency and accountability are the keys to fighting corruption, and we'll fight corruption by creating an office that will dynamically scrutinize all government procurements, coupled with a lean government of no more than 60 ministers and deputies, and I guarantee you that we will come out victorious in this fight against corruption. Developing the agriculture and agribusiness sector with specialized zones in all regions with support from the Farmer Service Centers and Exim Bank. Ladies and gentlemen, some people say agriculture belongs to poor people. But I say agriculture can generate significant wealth and employment. We live in a world crippled by the ever-increasing effects of climate change. And in this uncertain and sometimes volatile world, food security becomes a strategic issue. To put it simply, we cannot even begin to think about transforming Ghana if we don't put the right focus on agriculture. We cannot be successful in anything we do if we do not first put food on the table at an affordable cost for our people. Agriculture is the cornerstone of growth. Ignoring it is like trying to build a house without a foundation. The slightest storm will bring that house down. Without reliable access to affordable and nutritious food in sufficient quantity, growth and development are impossible. So I don't look at agriculture as an occupation for the poor. I look at it as the very basis of our future. The simplest way to achieve food security is to produce food locally. If you produce food locally, you are not dependent on imports. And so you can still feed the people even if international distribution chains are broken. We won't have to go to other countries begging for grain if we get things right. This is the food security strategy I'm fighting for, and this is why I'm looking at farmers, fishermen, and other protein producers as strategic partners in building the Ghana we want, a modern, vibrant, thriving Ghana. Others may look down on agriculture, but I don't because I'm a farmer myself. I see farmers as my close brothers and sisters because of their strategic importance in helping Ghana become a true black star, not only of Africa but of the world. Farmers and fishers inspire me, and I hope that I will inspire them too. And let me just share three examples of the policies we will implement as soon as we form the next government. I've said already that we shall establish special agro-industrial zones in the 16 regions of our country to add value to local crops they have a comparative advantage to produce and thereby boost exports and reduce raw material imports. Secondly, we shall create opportunities for farmers to improve food security and bolster economic growth through the establishment of farmer service centers across the country. This will be enhanced by well-established farmers' cooperatives, advanced farming techniques, modern digital tools, and the promotion of agribusiness. And the third, we will launch a program similar 
to the Operation Feed Yourself and Industries program of the early 1970s to make Ghana self-sufficient in basic staples and curb unnecessary imports of things that we have a comparative advantage to produce. All three policies exemplify to the highest degree my vision of agriculture as a cornerstone of our future growth. True leadership, like I said, is about vision and about empowering the people to live that vision. Now I turn to digital youth. Let's face it, the digital revolution is here to stay. It has already transformed our lives in ways that were simply unpredictable only a few decades ago, and it will continue to do so. Around the world and here in Ghana, we now have digitized factories and even digital agriculture. This is the fourth industrial revolution. Indeed, the fifth industrial revolution, the cognitive age that brings human and machine intelligence into close proximity for sustainable growth, beckons us. And the sooner we embrace it, the more prosperous our nation will become. And this is why I'm a true and firm believer in the right to affordable and reliable internet for all our citizens. I believe that currently everybody should have access to internet connectivity. You may remember that four years ago, I promised Ghanaians that if elected president, I'll provide them with universal and affordable internet access. This promise still stands because my vision of a digital Ghana is as strong as ever. It is a vision that led me as president to deploy massive fixed and wireless broadband for reliable internet across our country. And it remains an undying vision. We need to be young in mind and in spirit. And this is a fabulous time in history, a time which we must be bold, create, and take advantage of the huge opportunities the digital world, particularly the digital economy, affords us. And so based on this vision of a new, vibrant digital Ghana, the next NDC government under my administration will partner with local tech startups and businesses to launch a digital jobs initiative to create at least 300,000 skilled employment opportunities for the youth in this sector. And so imagine this, 300,000 employment opportunities for our young people. And this is the field that they not only love, but they often excel at. I look at my children, my nieces and my nephews, and I'm amazed at their digital skills, as I'm sure many parents in Ghana are. So I'm telling you, like I tell everybody else, let these kids thrive. They are our future, so let them build this future. It will be glorious, I promise you. All they need from us is our support and understanding. And I promise all of them my full support and my wholehearted understanding. My dearest young Ghanaians, I stand by you 100% and I always will. When we talk about the digital revolution, we also need to talk about the digital divide about those who are being left behind. On my watch, I'll do whatever it takes to provide universal access and bridge the digital divide in this country. We must close that digital gap. The NDC promises this, and it was in our 2020 manifesto, that we shall train one million coding professionals in demand of digital skills for growth, business process outsourcing, and knowledge process outsourcing ecosystems, ensuring that no one is left behind in this digital revolution. One million coders, I mean, just think about it. And I believe we can do it. And this is our plan. It is our pledge to you. And no Ghanaian will be left behind in this digital revolution. Let me also assure the sports fraternity, that we shall develop our stadium infrastructure for track and field sports, will fix the deteriorating football pitches, and pay stipends to footballers in the Premier League, like we promised in 2020. What we call the lesser known sports shall also receive equitable attention, like we give soccer. And I have good news for the creative industry. Our overarching policy for the industry shall be the Black Star experience. And this will be geared towards boosting the tourism and creative arts sector. It will include the Pan-African Month, the Ghana Film Festival and Awards Month, the Ghanaian Heritage and History Month, 
the Fashion and Food Month and the Diasporan Month. Additionally, we'll rehabilitate all our regional centers of national culture and make them available to the creative industry. We'll also support aging artists who currently, many of whom currently live in poverty. My colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, together we shall overcome. Together we shall reset the narrative and restore Ghana to its rightful place among the Committee of Nations. The time for change has come. The time to change this non-performing, corrupt government is now. Let us seize this moment to build the Ghana we want together for a brighter future for our children and for generations yet to come. May God bless our homeland, Ghana. And I'd like to stop here and invite you to ask your questions so that we can continue the conversation about the many other issues I have left out for now. I thank you very much for your kind attention.